Every morning when I wake up, I wear my Apple Watch. It keeps me on schedule by reminding me of my meetings and keeps me active during the day by encouraging me to close my activity rings. Maybe you are wearing a Fitbit, an Oura ring, a hoop or something else to track your steps or to monitor your workouts. All these are wearables and the field is ever expanding. Note, however, right now, these devices are currently used just for fun. They cannot provide reliable medical diagnostics. In other words, today's wearables cannot be used as medical grade devices. My name is Asimina Kyurti, and I'm on a mission to change that. In my group, we carry out interdisciplinary research and combine engineering, specifically electromagnetics, with medicine. Our goal is to develop new classes of sensors for unmet clinical needs that operate seamlessly and inconspicuously on a 24-7 basis. Now, to do this, we need to think really big and use our imagination to envision what medical sensors could look like years down the road. At the same time, we need to take small steps and balance our high-risk, high-reward ideas by working with clinicians who are ready to test with patients at this very second. Let me give you three examples of the breadth of possibilities. First, we're developing smart clothes that monitor the way we move. Think about a girl who has been playing basketball her entire life. She's now in her college basketball team and suffers an ACL tear. She undergoes knee surgery and has months of recovery ahead of her. During this recovery process, she needs to describe how she's feeling based on a one to 10 scale to get her back to the basketball court. It is a very subjective process. Now, imagine the same athlete wearing a pair of smart leggings that monitor knee motion, personalize her rehabilitation, and provide objective measures for her safe return to play. To make this big idea possible, what we do is embroider loops into the fabric. A few of these loops are transmitting magnetic fields and the rest are receiving. According to Faraday's law, voltage is generated at the receiving loops, and this voltage changes as the joint moves and the loops misalign. We can then collect these voltages and post-process them to derive angles. So we can actually observe the motion of the athlete throughout the recovery process. We now have very promising results on cylinders that emulate human limbs. Here, you can see how a 3D printed fixture accounts for the knee joint. These days, we're working with clinicians to start testing on human subjects. The sensor is not embroidered yet, but you can see the general idea. In another case, we're thinking about how wearable technology could be used in conjunction with implants inside the body. We're developing tiny brain implants that do not require batteries to operate. The implant senses neural activity and then communicates this information to a wearable, much like a hat. One day, this smart hat could warn a patient with epilepsy of an upcoming seizure and could ideally suppress it as well. This could be a game changer in the management and treatment of epilepsy. We have demonstrated feasibility using a function generator that emulates brain activity, as well as phantoms that mimic the human head. We are now improving the implant's interface to the neural electrode and plan to start testing on animals. Finally, as another example, we're working with the College of Nursing and the Department of Design to develop collaborative games that utilize wearable technology for kids with disabilities. Imagine kids with autism or kids with physical disabilities being able to play with their family and caregivers using skin-to-skin -to -skin touch as seen put to the game. We color platinum circle and have developed sensors that are placed on the player's wrists to sense on their hand's touch. An iPad is placed between the players and they can control an animated frog on the screen by pressing the sensors. You can see that the girl is definitely having fun with her mother. We have recently completed testing with kids without disabilities and the creative ideas brought forward by the kids themselves have been one of a kind. Some kids tried putting the sensors on their feet instead of hands, while others tried to eliminate the second player by placing sensors on both their hands and feet. So I talked a lot about imaginative ideas and creativity, 
And I do want to say that this is not necessarily my natural state. I consider myself more of a logic, math person. One thing that keeps me connected to imagination, however, is working with kids. Besides Circle, that I mentioned earlier, I frequently host school-age kids in my group, perform outreach in science festivals and museums, and run workshops for young girls to spark their interest in science and technology. Recently, I joined forces with Cool Tech Girls, a local nonprofit, to design a year-long workshop for middle school girls on the topic of tech and fashion. That is combining technology with fashion. We train girls on wearables in the first semester, then on programming in the second semester, and conclude with a year-end competition. The imaginative potential I'm seeing while working with kids is phenomenal. In the past, a kid proposed a wearable to help a blind navigate, another proposed gloves to assist Parkinson's patients with their daily activities, another got so excited with our circle platform that she started brainstorming game ideas. I really believe that to solve tomorrow's big problems, we need to stay connected with imagination today. And I can't wait to see how the big things we dream up become a reality. Thank you.